All right. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sydney Diedrich, and I'm the marketing manager here at New Cloud Networks. Uh, I want to thank you for attending the webinar virtually today. Um, the webinar is called Our IT Decision Maker's Guide to Office 365 Backup, and it's brought to you by New Cloud Networks and Veeam. Uh, you're going to hear from myself as well as Michael Deemer of Veeam Solutions Engineer. And if at any time during the webinar you have a question um, or a comment, please feel free to use the question feature on your screen, and we'll address all questions at the end. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and dive right in. To kick things off, uh, I want to take a moment to really emphasize the issue at hand. Um, so in, it, in this day and age, email communications, calendar meetings, documents and data that we use on a daily basis are all essential to pretty much every business. Um, and I know that personally, I use email every hour of every day, and specifically I use Office 365. Um, and I use it to keep my cal calendar, I use it to monitor um, my email or my communications, and I use it to keep notes on meetings and um, other things that I'm doing, tasks and, and whatnot. I don't know about you, but I actually know that if I couldn't access any of those things, um, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> and, um, like many people out there, and actually I'm also guilty of assuming that, you know, this cloud-based pl platform, um, it should be available to me 24 by 7, and if it goes down, um, I shouldn't actually lose anything because it's in the cloud and it's backing itself up, right? Well... The truth is, um, that's not actually the case here. There are actually no true backups um, being taken of your autom of your Office 365 instance um, through Microsoft. It's it's not included with your Microsoft service. And to make matters worse, um, I I know that if any of us experience any downtime um, and assumed that Microsoft was backing this up, we'd probably lose productivity for a week or more. Um, and I'm just one employee, <laughs> and imagine that across your entire organization. So um, to ensure that we have a plan in place, um, should any of us experience an outage or any other scenario that causes Office 365 downtime, um, we really should look to a third-party backup provider. Um, and to put some of this in perspective, um, email data can be affected by several different variants, uh, not just unplanned downtime, but by cyber attacks like ransomware. And in fact, CSO Online tells us that 94% of malware attacks are delivered via email. So to be clear, Office 365, as we know, is way more than just email. It consists of our day-to-day -day Word documents, our presentations, our shared files, and more. And these files are all essential uh, to how we do business. So according to Gartner, uh, Microsoft Office 365 offers a robust disaster recovery, but is very limited in backup capabilities. And for this reason, Microsoft themselves even recommends the addition of a third-party backup to your Office 365 instance. So I think that this is a great segue to hand over um, to Michael Deemer to talk about the sort of solutions that might exist um, and how you can ensure the safety of your data. So with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Michael. Perfect, thank you, Sydney. Again, my name is Michael Deemer. I'm a systems engineer here at Beam Software. And today we'll be going over uh, what Microsoft covers, what do they actually protect you from, uh, what Veeam protects you from, and what, why is it important to actually have that backup solution inside of your Office 365 environment, and even your uh, on-prem, hybrid, and, and actually full deployed in the cloud Office 365 instance. Um, so moving forward here just a little bit, um, let me just do this. I, whoa, go way too far. So the need for Office 365, right? So why do we need it? Well, as Cindy said, uh, Microsoft does not actually take a true data. Like there's no true backup of your your uh, your all your data, your data sets, um, any of the emails, your Teams chats, even from your calendar invites. There's nothing that they are actually truly capturing and actually making it into a true backup, right? 
Um, so it's your data, you control it. Now, moving forward here just a little bit, and I'll kind of elaborate a little more. Um, so what does Office 365 protect? Um, at the end of the day, they protect their infrastructure. What they guarantee is their 99.9% .9 uptime in their infrastructure. So when you log in, you're going to make sure you're going to get that login window. You're going to have, you know, everything's going to log in just fine. However, what they don't protect is actually in this little gray box right here. This is what's your data, all your data sets, your mails, your, your calendar items, your Teams chat, all that. So that's very important to note that they are not the ones actually going out there and, and making sure that your data is good. They don't want to be reliable for it. They actually say it right on their website themselves. They, you know, hey, we back up the infrastructure. The data is yours. Do with it as you please. Um, going forward here. So again, why do I need a backup? So the perception is Microsoft takes, Microsoft takes care of everything. Well, kind of like I elaborated here a little bit, um, they don't. Again, they are, are guaranteeing this uptime for Office 365. That's what they can guarantee, and that's what they can, that's what they are, they're standing behind. Now, reality is they just take care of the infrastructure and the user data, uh, long-term archival from inboxes to your team's chat, anything that they actually have correspondence that actually is going on, um, that's all your data. So that part, that's for you and for, you know, your environment to kind of come up with. Um, and now they also don't protect against long-term retention. Office 365 by default, uh, here, and I'll kind of go to the next slide and kind of show you. Actually, by default, they only protect a certain uh, subset uh, for a certain amount of time. And I'll kind of go over that a little bit later in the slide. Um, but let me actually dig into a little bit further here on the six reasons why we should have a backup, right? So let's just start with the, I'll start, I'll read them from left to right first, and then I'll kind of dig into them. So accidental deletion, right? That's huge. Retention policy. Uh, now the retention policy inside of Microsoft 365 is very confusing. It doesn't, it leaves off a, a lot of gaps in between stuff. You're not really too, you're not really knowing if you're completely secure. Um, internal security threats, right? So malicious insiders, uh, maybe even, you know, even departing employees inside of the company or just malicious admins. You never know. Oh, maybe somebody went rogue and, and said, hey, we're going to delete all this stuff and, and good luck. Uh, external, security, external security threat, which is huge, right? Uh, so ransomware, rogue applications, uh, maybe even something inside of the, the, the email box or the, that exchange server that has actually been opened and that, that has compromised. Uh, the, the logistics of the entire exchange server. Uh, moving forward to legal and com compliance requirements, um, as we know, they don't actually keep your data for a long time. So maybe you have a compliance or a requirement to keep your data for seven years. Well, guess what? Microsoft 365 doesn't do that. Uh, they're not going to do that. Again, that's your data. Uh, they're guaranteeing that uptime. And then managing hybrid deployments and migration. So this is the need for, you know, let's just say you're fully on-prem and you want to actually start moving that data up to the cloud or new cloud, actually getting them involved and actually moving that data off. Um, this, this is the tool that's going to be able to help you. We can take a full VBK, shrink it all down and actually move it and export it right up to the cloud with a PST. Everything will be good, fine and dandy. Uh, and then you're back up and rolling with little to no downtime if any, um, especially if you if you do it in the corresponding steps that are, are required, right? So let me dig a little bit back on the first step. So accidental deletion, which is huge. Maybe you have clients in there uh, or employees that go in there and maybe they deleted a whole bunch of stuff that they either weren't supposed to or they thought it wasn't non-critical. Well, how do you actually get it back? So right now with Office 365, you have to go in there run an e-discovery report, hope that it's still in the e-discovery report. Um, sometimes depending on the magnitude or, or how far out this, this data set is that you're looking for, it might not even be able to capture it. It might say, hey, that's too far back. I don't have any recollection of that data and that data set. Um, and then uh, moving forward here just a little bit to retention policy. Retention policy with Veeam, it's very good. If you want to keep your data for one year to five years, or you want to keep it for 25 years or, or keep forever, that's where, you know, Veeam can come into play and actually use that saying, hey, this is how long I want to keep the data, fine and dandy, let's put it on that repo or, or that particular uh, resting spot for that data and you'll be good. Uh, again, internal and external security threats, which are huge nowadays. 
Um, so protecting against, you know, those departing employees, making sure that you have a solid backup that you can roll back to just in case there's any malicious insiders that go in and do that. And then external external uh, security threats. Um, so rogue rogueware or ransomware, right? And then rogue applications. So making sure that you're protected against that. And then also that what also goes hand in hand with internal and external security threats is the the overall look of the company, right? Making sure that if for whatever reason you do have ransomware, that you're back up and running instead of days or weeks, you're back up and running as soon as you mount that 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 uh, re, uh, the repository, making sure that that backup is viable and then booting from it, you're good. And then you back up. There's no real, you know, you do have to go in and dig out the ransomware and get that out of the environment. But however, you're back up and running with little to no downtime. Uh, legal and compliance requirements. Again, this goes back to maybe you're a bank or maybe you have certain legal and uh, requirements to keep data for X amount of years. Well, with with as a way as it sits right now with Office 365, that's that's not an option. Uh, but with Beam, when Beam comes into play, we can keep your data forever, however long you want. It's completely up to you. And then again, managing that hybrid deployment and migration. So helping you move your, your data and your data sets to the corresponding repos or actually moving that data to uh, up to the, the cloud tier, that object storage, or into new cloud to help you uh, get that, that, that copy up there and help with the migration. Moving forward here, let's do this. There we go. So um, malware service, right? So hello, I have a new feature. So this is gonna be kind of like a timeline of how it looks, how it feels. If you do have like malware uh, and, or ransomware in, inside of your environment, how it's gonna look. So hey, I got a new feature, boom. And then you're gonna say, oh, okay, I'm gonna open this email. And then, you know, I'm just a regular user. I'm gonna open it up and actually just follow this link because that's what it told me to do. It's from Microsoft itself. Uh, no harm, no foul here, right? And then moving forward just a little bit, so you put in your auth token, and then it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna give read and write access to your email? Most of the time, I don't know how many people out there actually look through what they're accepting. Um, I know I do, but uh, I also know other people that don't look, they just go accept, I have to accept it, that is what it is, and then we move on. And then malware starts encrypting objects inside the environment, right? So your exchange is, is starting to gonna look like this. It's not gonna be very readable. You have officially been ransomed, right? So what do we do now? So most likely what's gonna happen next is you're gonna get an email that says, hey, you have ransomware. Uh, if you pay X amount in uh, cryptocurrency for this particular one, it's gonna be Bitcoin. Um, we can actually actually start redoing that ransom. So we can actually pull it back off that exchange server or that, just that particular instance of that exchange. And then, you know, making sure that you're back up and running. Well you know, that's all fine and dandy, and here's what that email would look like, right? So, hey, you have some important emails that have been correct, uh, encrypted. Uh, how do you want to recover? And then it's going to say, hey, send $300 worth of Bitcoin to this particular address, and we'll make sure it's all good. Well, you know what? Way back in the day, there used to be two or three potential uh, ransomware components out there that really used to actually give you your data back. Now, it wasn't 100% guaranteed. Your data was still encrypted. Uh, and it's still out there in, in the black, on the dark web. However, they, you know, sometimes they actually will give it back. And that was way back, early, early 2000s. Now they have ransomware as a service. These people are going on the dark web and just typing in ransomware, and they're doing ransomware as a service. They have call centers at their disposal. You know, these people can actually just be regular, uh, you know, uh, people that don't really have a lot of IT knowledge that are actually going out there and starting ransomware as a service um, activities going on right through a call center, they call in and, and everybody else kind of does all the back end work and they're, they're just the, the brains of the operation. Uh, let me move here. Oops, there we go. So the retention policy. So this is gonna be the retention policy of Office 365 as it sits right now. So inbox or folder data for Office 365, it's gonna keep up to about the two year mark and then move it to the archive, right? Now, if you have any e-discovery settings, so any items that have been deleted or modified or even archived, um, after that one month mark in the deleted bin, guess what? It's permanently, permanently deleted. Doesn't matter what you try to do, you can call up Office 365. It's already purged from their particular repos, their repositories, so it's gonna be gone. There's no getting that data back. 
Um, so this is if you have auto, auto archive data set up in, in this particular order. So it's going to keep it for about the one mark, one month mark, and then move to an archive, uh, and then junk email. As soon as it's in there for about a month and a half, uh, it gets permanent, permanently deleted. No, no moving it back. It's gone. It's completely off their repos again. And then in company or an employee leaves the company, which I think this is one of the most critical parts, right? So you remove that license. And let's just say you didn't take a PST file or you didn't back up that uh, or, or at least try to get the data that the data set that was there. It's gone. It's permanently deleted. As soon as you as soon as you actually take that license off, I think you do have a 30 day leeway. But however, as soon as it's gone and it's past that that little small retention policy that they do leave out there, it is gone. You, you can call them. Uh, it's just not going to come back. Uh, and then going forward, what Beam protects? What can Beam do for the Office 365 suite? So it doesn't matter where you're at in this, junk email, to employee leaving, to auto archive, deleted items, inbox, it's all gonna be there with Office 365 for V, right? So it doesn't matter where we're at, we're gonna be able to protect it and you're gonna be good. And this is gonna be the same thing with SharePoint and OneDrive. So SharePoint, obviously we're gonna be able to back up and SharePoint is, ba or OneDrive is basically SharePoint just with a fancy skin over it. So yes. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to be able to protect that, protect those data sets, and, and making sure that you're going to be good and protected all, around, all the way around. Let's see. Uh, there we go. So what does it look like actually deploying? So this little guy here is going to be your Veeam backup and replication. Uh, depending where you have it inside the environment, if it's fully in the cloud, um, if it's on-prem, uh, for for, the, for this instance, it does look like we have Office 365 up here in the uh, Office 365 tenant. And so depending where you want to go with it, there's a couple different options. So you can actually bring it back to uh, either on-prem and actually move it to a corresponding repo. Or if you had an on-prem ex uh, on premise exchange server, right, we can actually start backing that up as well and moving it to the same a repo or a different repo or a different extent inside of the, the environment. Again, depending on how you want to architect it out, it's, it's easily to be done. And then I can kind of show you how it's done to hy hybrid environments as well. So let's just say you're, you're, you know, you have a hybrid environment. It's going to be the same thing. So if you're hybrid, on-prem, or fully in the cloud, we have you protected with Beam, and you're going to be able to do it. Now, what we do is we do secure and quick resource. So we use this what's called a Beam Explorer, and we get all the way down to granular level. So anything that we can see on the file level, we can actually pull out. So Let's just say you have a particular email and you're like, hey, I don't want to, you know, pull out the entire exchange mailbox just for this one particular user. Okay, cool. So, boom, you open the Veeam Explorer, go in there. You can actually preview the data before actually pulling it back. So, you just left-click preview or open. And what that's going to allow you to do um, is verify that this data is the data set that you want, uh, the data set that you actually need that you, you don't want to pull back over the WAN or or even if it's internal, uh, you don't want to be, uh, you know, putting any more load on the uh, the meg pipe than needed. That's where, we're, that's where we're going to come in and be able to help you with that. Now, we can also, for for the, the Explorer side of things, we can export as a PST. So if you just need to export a potential uh, mailbox, exchange, um, even this is, even can go into SharePoint and OneDrive. So if you need to keep or overwrite the data, this is where that can be in, in, in mind. Um, so we have a Beam Explorer for Exchange, a Beam Explorer for SharePoint, and a Beam Explorer for OneDrive. And they're all going to basically ask the same. They're going to be able to get into that those data sets and actually move around and you get that, that granular data that you actually need out um, and verifying that data before actually pulling it out as well. Um, so so again. How and then also uh, what I what I what I what I want to touch on is e-discovery settings inside of the the Explorer. So we can also see what has been deleted or modified in the Veeam Explorer itself. So it's just too too little. Once you actually uh, uh, mount the Veeam Explorer, you pick the point in time that you want to do it, give a name and a reason, and then at the bottom there's going to be two little checkboxes that says, Hey, do you want to uh, do in in uh, to perform e-discovery settings. So that's going to be, you know, anything that's been deleted or modified by the user that we're going to also be, be able to see in the backup file. So, you know, let's just say, for for instance, hey, uh, a user came up to you, hey, I didn't receive this email, and you have to dig and dig and dig, 
You can't find it in eDiscovery through Office 365 because it's already been deleted. It's permanently deleted. It's off the repo. However, you go into a Veeam backup, a Veeam backup for Office 365. You check the two eDiscovery settings, and boom, there it is. It's right there. It's in the set of time and the date. The last time it was open, you can actually start viewing the properties uh, right side, right from the Explorer itself. You can see, like at least for SharePoint, OneDrive, and Exchange, you can actually see if it was deleted, the version that was deleted. Um, if anyone has that that particular uh, file open, so if, if any files are open, that's going to be more for SharePoint and 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 OneDrive. But you can also see the last uh, the versioning of it, and the last person that actually took it out of the library and actually did any editing, which is huge. Uh, to actually be able to narrow that down and, and get to the meat and potatoes of actually what's going on. Um, and then this is going to be kind of the same thing I kind of already talked about. So this is going to be for, for um, like more for migration. So helping with actually moving that, that data to the cloud. Or if you want to actually pull it back down from the cloud and put it back on an on-premise server, Beam can help you do that um, effectively and efficiently by doing that uh, inside the environment. Um, so again, I already kind of talked a lot about SharePoint and OneDrive, but I just want to again touch base that we do back up SharePoint, SharePoint for uh, SharePoint uh, online and OneDrive for business, which is critical, right? So these are a lot of main applications that are used inside of the environment day in and day out. Uh, maybe you have a lot of SharePoint data that you use, uh, and then everybody most of the time has a OneDrive for business um, that's attached to their Office 365. Uh, license. So we're making sure to grab uh, grab all the data. We're not leaving any data sets on the table. We're even grabbing Teams data. So if you need to, you know, redo Teams chats, we can actually go in there, granularly pull out these chats uh, for that particular type of instance that you're needing, and actually restore them if needed. Uh, or if you just need to browse them for uh, redundancy or br browse them for anything else, um, you can do that right from the Explorer itself. Um, so let me kind of go over the the summary here. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, securing backups, right? Quick recoveries and effective, or, or, or efficient e-discovery and archives for email. So, which is huge. So making sure that we're actually grabbing those data sets as they're needed, um, right from the 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 the, uh, the tenant itself, right? So that's huge. And then quick and granular recovery. So going in there, making sure that the data sets that you're pulling out or these emails the, to the calendars to even you know uh, 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 chat we can actually pull it out very granular uh, verifying that this data before actually redoing it and pulling it back uh, and then e-discovery settings which I kind of already touched a bit on uh, so we're, we, uh, we're able to go in and see anything that's been deleted and also anything that's also been uh, uh, modified by that particular user uh, we can go in and, and verify uh, those particular settings as well um, this is where I would like to pass it back over to Sydney, one of our Platinum VCSP partners. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening in. Great. Thanks so much, Michael. Really great information there. Um, I want to take a quick step back here for some of you who may not be familiar with who New Cloud is and give you some context. Um, so New Cloud Networks, as Michael just mentioned, we are a Veeam Platinum service provider, cloud service provider, and we've been uh, in business since 1988. Um, obviously, we weren't um, in the cloud back then or called New Cloud. That would have been some tremendous foresight on our part, but uh, we are... Um, First and foremost, our background is primarily in networking, and we've evolved several times over the years to adjust our offerings um, along with the changes in technology. Uh, as such, we've amassed over 1,000 customers in the U.S. and in Europe, um, and again, uh, we are a platinum partner of Veeam, uh, and we've built a reputation for quality within our industry. Um, our, our SLA and our customer satisfaction rating does a great job of exemplifying that. So what you're looking at here is a breakdown of our global ultra low latency cloud network. Uh, the network is actually designed and built for backup and disaster recovery. So when we talk about backup in DR, um, it's actually really important to have your data both far enough away from your main site so that it won't be affected by the same natural disaster, but close enough so that it's usable and easily recalled when you need to stand up any VMs. Um, and we control the bandwidth and the latency between all these locations here which ensures that our customer's data is always accessible. So if your company is hit by ransomware um, or any other 
anomaly. Uh, that means that we can get your data back up, um, your backups and replicas back to you quickly, basically um, limiting or eliminating downtime. Just a quick overview here of our Veeam offerings. So we do work hand in glove with Veeam to bring customers best in breed solutions. And we have a variety of Veeam offerings that we support. Um, our engineers are being certified and implement technology very quickly. And we do offer the full suite of Veeam backup and recovery solutions, um, which in includes um, Cloud Connect backup, Cloud Connect disaster recovery, um, and Veeam backup for Office 365. So what makes New Cloud great? Um, you know, at New Cloud, we like to say we believe that great technology is powered by great people, and our people truly do make all the difference. Um, we are often asked what sets apart what sets, what sets us apart, excuse me, from Amazon um, and Microsoft, and our answer is always the same. We we believe in personalized service. We're not a one eight hundred number, um, and our customers can rest assured that we have engineers available to them twenty four by seven by three sixty five to help. Uh, we know that no two companies are the same, so we don't believe in cookie cutter cloud solutions. We work really closely with our customers to ensure that we develop solutions that address their core business needs. We implement solutions um, using best in breed technology, and we're able to provide these solutions to you at an affordable price. So the bottom line is that we believe in taking care of our customers. So this Office 365 backup topic is more or less really straightforward. Um, so we Kind of went through it rather quickly, but we do have time to address some of your questions. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for joining the webinar today, and I hope you learned a lot about backing up your Office 365 instance with us. Um, you've heard from Veeam, you've heard from New Cloud, and now we want to talk to you about your unique business needs and understand how we can help. So our contact information is here on the screen. Um, we do have a backup trial um, for Veeam Cloud Connect backup available if you're interested in learning more about that and kicking the tires. Um, but without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn to the chat. And it looks like we have a few questions here. Um, the first one, uh, is, which is a really great question, is Office 365 Backup a separate program or is that built directly into Veeam Backup and Replication? So yeah, uh, so Veeam Backup for Office 365 and then Veeam Backup for, uh, or Veeam Backup for Replication it's completely two separate ISOs. So one's going to do more of the physical, the virtual infrastructure. And then this is what's going to be tying in to those tenant infrastructure. So multiple tendencies uh, or, or the Office 365 piece. So yes, it's com two completely separate offerings and they are kind of split down the middle. Great. And then this next question here, um, just kind of several questions built into one. So I'll kind of break them out. Um, first and foremost, they're asking if um, there's any licensing minimums. And no, there aren't any licensing minimums on Office 365 backup. Um, you can choose to backup one mailbox or you can choose to backup several. Um, if you have been experiencing any um, feedback that there are licensing minimums in the past, you may be talking to a different cloud service provider out there who implements those on their end. Um, but in terms of new cloud, we do not have any um, minimum licenses that you need to purchase. Um, and then if from someone has heard that Community Edition offers 10 free licenses, um, I'm not quite sure. Have you heard of that, Michael, at all? I know for Veeam Backup for Replication, it's, it's the uh, 10 free licenses, but I'm not too sure if on the Community Edition, for for office 365 now keep in mind if you did try to do the community edition and let's just say you have 100 plus users your entire sharepoint your entire onedrive and your entire exchange is not going to be protected off those 10 users only that subset of users will and you're still going to run into problems backing up uh, if you're not going to be doing the full data sets of the full users uh, that is actually adjusted inside of the the tenant licensing account gotcha um, can Veeam Backup and Replication and Backup for Office 365 run on the same server? Absolutely. So we actually, uh, depending on, on the side of, uh, of the environment, but I would say for the majority of users out there, if you're not running this in your enterprise and it's a, 
SMB or, or even a, you know, a, a much larger business, uh, as long as the resources are there on that primary server that has like the, the processing power that's needed for L365 is not great. Uh, it's going to be a lot greater than, or it'd be like uh, Veeam backup for replication or Veeam backup and replication would be a lot greater than the L365 uh, piece. So as long as you have the resources on the server, absolutely. Uh, I suggest it all the time just to kind of keep everything in one. Uh, but again, if you did want to make it modular and throw it on another physical server or another VM, um, that's completely doable as well. Great. Um, and then can I restore my own emails without the help of New Cloud? Yeah, absolutely. We can. Uh, so New Cloud actually has an offering where they can actually just set you up in a self-service tenant portal, uh, and you can actually go in there. You're not going to have the full capabilities as you would as like an admin or a sysadmin would. Um, you are uh, restricted only to your email box. Um, but yes, you can uh, pull out that granular data if needed. Great. And then uh, looks like we have one last question coming through here. How long can I keep my data in storage with New Cloud? Forever. So if you didn't hear that, that was forever. <laughs> there are no uh, storage <laughs> minimums <laughs> with uh, regards to, or sorry, storage minimums. There's no, uh, there's no time limit on how long you can store your data with us. Um, so going back to the slide where Michael mentioned the um, compliances and, and legal um, legal needs around uh, data storage. Um, we work with all different industries to meet those. Um, so great. So with that, I will go ahead and uh, give you 30 minutes back in your day and um, and conclude the webinar. So I thank you all for your time and I hope that you learned some valuable information around backup um, for Office 365. And we hope to hear from you soon. So thank you thank so much you for your time.